Well, Royal Invest was really born out of um, a frustration, I think, that I and several colleagues had with the quality of investment proposals originating in many developing countries. Um, there are no clear formats and many of them are very poor quality. It started very simple, simply as a, a spreadsheet where we tried to ensure that people making proposals for investment uh, at community level would include the key information we needed. But it rapidly became clear that more and more information uh, could be included in this in a formatted way. And so over the years, and this has been now 15 years in development, uh, Rural Invest has grown from being a simple set of spreadsheets to uh, a variety of software forms. It's now run in an open access software so that any person can use it. Um, and it now includes a lot of information on the groups themselves, the, the applicants, the type of activity they want to do, the costs and income, if it's an income generating project involved, um, how the project will be managed, a wide variety of factors. It's now available in uh, seven languages. That's all of the documentation plus the software, which is a key element. Uh, those seven languages include English, French and Spanish, but also Russian, Arabic, Portuguese and Turkish. Users and beneficiaries are, are two different groups. The beneficiaries are primarily members of rural communities who are eligible for small investment funding. This can be for what we call income generating projects, which are those which will generate cash, uh, such as transport, shops, agricultural investments, or it can be for what we call non-income generating investments. These might be health clinics, village schools, daycares, access roads, this sort of thing. So they are the main beneficiaries. The main users of Rural Invest tend to be either a field staff of the Ministry of Agriculture or Ministry of Environment. Uh, they may be from NGOs or they may be increasingly from private sector. We now have several banks with uh, extensive operations in rural areas who are using Rural Invest for their customers. Well, I think Rural Invest met a need uh, uh, that was evolving in the 80s and 90s, which uh, focused on much greater emphasis on providing resources to communities to make their own investments. And this means that communities have far more involvement in and far more commitment to the investments than if they're simply handed to them on a plate. I think it fills that need in providing a tool which can be used by uh, people who may have a background in livestock or sociology or forestry, but not necessarily in finance and economics. The key to the success in the use of Rural Invest has been the adoption by the parent agency uh, of Rural Invest within its overall systems. We quite often get requests for Rural Invest training where the agency thinks that all they've got to do is train their field staff in Rural Invest and, and the job is finished. But of course, Rural Invest is only a way of identifying potentially useful investments. It then has to be tied in to the way the agency operates in assessing those investments and in dispersing and controlling the funds. The ultimate objective is to have Rural Invest seen widely, uh, both by national governments and international funding agencies, as the standard tool for preparing, uh, evaluating and monitoring uh, local investments.